They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. My name is Bill Marnie. I serve with C Company, 39th Australian Militia Infantry Battalion. I was 21 when we, when we boarded the Aquitania to sail for New Guinea. We didn't know where we were going, but we found out on the way. I was one of the more fortunate ones. With all of us, it, we didn't care really what happened to ourselves in the battles. It was leaving our mates behind was the part that hurt. And if you got out, it was a great bonus. Hi, Hi Bill. Alex. Nice to meet you. So, Bill, this is there'll be the first Anzac Day for both of them on Wednesday. Mm. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. Mm. That'll be great. Mm. As long as they get picked. If I can't play better than Collingwood did last week, they might even give me a game. <laughs> <laughs> spot on. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> I think it is important for guys to understand and it's good to see Keefe and, and Faz just standing there and talking to Bill and asking questions about where, where he fought and when he fought and his experiences in the war. So I think it's important for people to understand that at their age um, they'd probably served a few times um, had they been born in a different era. So it's, uh, you pinch yourself that you're lucky enough to be playing AFL football and that um, you weren't born however many years earlier. How old were you Bill when you first when, uh, when you went to war? I'm 21. 21? Well, I turned 22 just the other day. Younger so than That's young. Anzac Day was uh, instilled in me at a pretty early age. Um, old man used to take me down to uh, dawn parades back home in Gympie. Oh, well, obviously, you know, chatting to guys like Bill today and you know, just to hear the stories and, and what they went through and what they went through for us, um, we're very much thankful. Uh, I suppose meeting a bloke like Bill uh, gives you a first-hand experience in uh, hearing about what guys my age and younger went through during the war back in the day, and, and I suppose getting that, getting that first-hand experience that just hits home harder and probably makes uh, what you're playing for on Anzac Day uh, much more special. Anzac Day is not just simply a public holiday, it's a remembrance of all those who fought in all the wars we've had to fight in and to defend the values of this country. It's probably going to be the biggest game of my life so far, so um, get out there and try to soak it in and enjoy it. You know, you never know if it's going to be your last, so get out there and hopefully uh, play well. You know, I guess it's a lot of lot of kids dream to actually be able to run out and play and play in such a massive game. So um, you know, I'm really excited about doing it, and I uh, can't wait. <laughs> Good on you, Bill. Number one. No <laughs> yes, yeah, a great experience for Lockie Keith and Alex for solo, and I'm sure our next guest will agree. Coach Nathan Buckley, Bucks, a great experience for the boys. Yeah, look at um, yeah, Bill's obviously uh, had an experience that very few of us had have had and um, the fact that you know, he sees Anzac Day through different eyes than, than what we would as footballers and the opportunity to play in uh, a game on, on the MCG on Anzac Day is very different to obviously why we're celebrating that day and uh, guys like Bill need to be uh, congratulated and thanked. Well you did exactly that now I just want you to take your coach's hat off just for a moment you did that in 1995 the first of the Anzac Day clashes against Essendon you got the three Brownlow votes what were your recollections? It was a draw, Chris O. Um, clearly the recollections of the mullet were uh, in place. I was trying to take uh, you on at that stage. But um, look, it was a huge day. The 95,000 uh, people turned up. Um, Sheeds had obviously worked very hard to get it to get it up or back up and running, the Anzac Day game. And um, you know, the, the way that that game panned out was a good restart for it. Yeah. And really from, from that moment, uh, it's built... Uh, a rivalry and an aura of its own um, as a standalone game. You played in a lot of Anzac Day games as a player. What about your memories of the build-up? Mick Malthouse was was big on educating the playing group about what Anzac Day was about. Yeah, Mick was a, a student of war and, and was um, uh, always sort of found another gear when it came to uh, to Anzac Day games and and really 
enjoyed exploring sort of the, the concepts of, of war and, and what uh, people went through when they went away to war. Um, yeah, so that was always, a, you know, obviously a common theme, a very, a very easy link um, to most of his pre-matches at that time. Now, as coach, and I know it's been a short break, have, have you done anything? Would you have liked to have done something in a similar vein? Oh, look, we've, uh, most of this week's been about recovery. Obviously, um, as, as Alex and, and Keith have just uh, discussed, the, uh, the spectre of the game looms large and it's, um, it's, very, it's, it's an important day. It's a day that we're looking forward to. But yeah, fundamentally, we, we were really focused on Port Adelaide on Saturday and then have been in recovery mode since. Now, what about team selection? It's always tough after a short backup. What has been your thinking going into selecting the team for this big game? 22 fit players, and um, we've definitely got that. You know, we'll, um, our squad of 25 that um, that's in place, we'll, we'll, our 22 will come from that. We probably uh, have never sort of thought of using the emergencies before, but there's um, you know every chance that we could we could use our our, our emergencies, and that that the, the side as selected will change. And um, you know, we're we're very conscious of Essendon's very solid performance um, on Saturday against Carlton, and and we'll pick the best side to beat that. Your young players, you must be pleased with their progress. Another young player we haven't seen for a couple of years is Nathan Brown. Uh, is is he going to play? Yes, look, Brown, he's, um, he's a fantastic story. Over the last 18 months, he's, uh, he's done his knee, he's uh, split his kneecap in half um, at various times, I'm sure. He would have thought that he would have struggled to come back and the players around have seen his diligence and his professionalism to, to get back into shape. Uh, he's played three and a half games, solid football through the VFL, and he's uh, tip top and ready to go. He's um, 50, played his 50th game in the in the grand final replay in 2010, and hasn't been on the MCG since. So there's going to be uh, a swirl of emotions through that bloke's head, and um, just couldn't be uh, happier to see him uh, back with the Collingwood Guernsey on. And give some support to Lockie Keefe, who you must be pretty proud of in terms of the job he's done with the absence of Ben Reid and Chris Tarrant in defence. Yeah, Keefe, he's really stood up. I mean, I think each week he's taken another step and um, yeah, his performance, as you say, in the absence of our more mature sort of key backs has been excellent. He's really been uh, a rock for us down there and, um, you know, he's, he's taken his opportunity and he's, he's really grown with it. So even though Keefe was talking about you never know when the opportunity will come, he's been treating every game like that. Well, mate, this is what you're playing for. You've held it aloft a few times as Pretty captain heavy. and play. It is very, very heavy. How confident are you? Oh, very. Look, we, um, we've got a belief in, in ourselves and, um, you know, we think that we've prepared well and we've got a game plan to, to get the job done. Well, good luck. It's uh, going to be a great day. Thanks, Chris. Nathan Buckley joining us, the coach of Collingwood, ahead of what's going to be another Anzac Day clash to remember, Collingwood versus Essendon. Well, as we go to the break, some more recollections of Anzac Day from a Collingwood favourite son. Back in my day, the Anzac Day wasn't anywhere near as significant as it is today. When I say significant, uh, it was very important, but it never had... Uh, uh, as much uh, uh, publicity about it, and uh, yeah, we should stood at attention, and, and we honoured the uh, honoured the past soldiers and everybody. But there wasn't so much hype about it, and I can I can only probably remember playing in one one game myself, and that game in 1973 where we played St Kilda out at Waverley. Uh, I I don't remember much about it. I can remember us lining up as we did for uh, like Queen's birthday and those sorts of days. The way Anzac Day is packaged today and, and all put together is fantastic. I mean, it more or less stops uh, the whole state. If you're not at the ground, there's, there's thousands of people watching the game on telly. No doubt they all stop, and so it's very significant. and uh, It just stops the whole country. Yeah, it's very important that the, the younger generation uh, learn what it's all about, and I think that football helps educate them in that way. And that's terrific that they can be remembered and obviously they, they've been told about their grandfather and their great-grandfather, so this sort of brings it into perspective, perspective a bit more. Well, the boys are up against it because a number of uh, players are out injured. Collingwood's newcomers will be out to prove themselves and Essendon want to win the game, so it's going to be one hell of a game. There'll be a lot of youngsters there that are probably playing on that, in, in this game for the first time. Uh, so it's going to be a huge build-up and a huge game. <laughs>